Hi. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Dr. Lakin Veera. I am a general laparoscopic and laser surgeon. And my specialty is usually uh, more focused towards perineal surgery and lasers. And that is a brief lecture today. And I like to make it interactive and, you know, to make it very easier for everyone to understand in not using any complicated uh, technical languages or words. Uh, see, our lecture today is on lasers in perineal surgery. Perineal surgery mostly focuses on three most common, uh, you know, patients that we get, which are one of the most uh, regular patients that we get in an outpatient. That is piles, fissure and fistula. Now, the most important reason for this lecture <clears throat> is not only focusing on the lasers, but trying to get a small overview of a lot of basic things that need to be done and a lot of misconceptions that are there in this uh, disease and, you know, perianal uh, disease involvement, usually what we say. So what happens basically in piles, fissure, fistula? Why does it happen? It is something that, to be very honest, every third to fourth Indian is having. And that is more because of our lifestyle, our stress, our food habits. I mean, we all have a regular habits of eating outside, eating more of those oily, spicy, Chinese and all those kind of things. So that along with, you know, mixed with <clears throat> a lot of stress, then a very small important factor which many people avoid is uh, hasty toilet habits. You know, what happens is when you go and you're always in a hurry to come out and all these things sound very stupid. You know, many a times we tell our patients about it when we start discussing about these diseases. They really don't even know that, you know, those are one of the causes which actually can cause piles and fish. And it's one of the most common causes of hastily toilet habits that we say. Coming to the other factors that deal with it is a big portion is diet. So, you know, later on, I will be discussing about the dietary precautions because in perianal surgery, diet forms a very, very important factor. Uh, so, you know, that is something that we need to always discuss with the patient in detail. Two, three other questions that I regularly get regarding perianal surgery and uh, what we usually like to discuss in detail is, sir, do we uh, always need surgery? How does it work? And sir, because hum ka kya hota hai? we have a lot of patients who have a lot of misconceptions uh, regarding this. So many a times they want to, you know, just not go ahead with surgery and all those things. So what usually happens is, in perianal surgery, we actually look at the concept and the factors of what happens in piles, fissure, fistula. Many patients have a pain. Pain is usually the most common symptom that we come with and a lot of bleeding. In such cases, many a time we come up to the real causative factors. Real causative factors regarding this perianal surgery, as I said and I stressed about, was diet. Second, a lot of it is dependent on straining of stools. I mean... Fissure and piles. These are two diseases where what happens is straining in stools is one of the most important factor that even a single episode when patient strains a lot, <clears throat> it may cause a small cut in the anal region which causes fissure. And unfortunately with fissure what happens is once it starts, <clears throat> it's like a uh, cascade. Because of the pain, patient has more <clears throat> Uh, pressure that he applies in the perineal region that causes a further cut and further pain and it just starts increasing eventually landing up in our OPD and eventually leading surgery. So among the causative factors a very important factor is training at the stools which <clears throat> in detail we have to explain to the patients. Except for that as I said about the dietary factors other factors included the poor toilet habits and hastily coming and going about it. Fistulae on the other aspect is a little bit different as compared to piles and fissure. Most of the times when we have these patients, we have a lot of history of a small abscess or a small boil which was untreated. Especially in the diabetic patients where a small abscess or infection moves around in the surrounding tissues and eventually lands up being a fistula. Many a times not even diagnosed because patient doesn't have much of the symptoms. He just has a small boil or a small dot which we can see in the perianal region. So that is something that many a times we have very late presentations in our OPD, which what happens is later on when we do further investigations or imaging like MRI and all, we have huge fistulas. So we really like to insist via this lecture also that about the early coming to the OPD so that, you know, these things can be picked up very easily. 
what other thing we usually have in opd is regarding this perianal surgery is in males and females females obviously there's a lot of shyness which is involved luckily we stay in mumbai and yaha shyness is not much of an issue but usually when we go for camps or we go into these rural areas we have had so many patients who have such major diseases and just because they don't want to you know show or the apprehension about the whole area being a perianal area and all that people are just suffering from the disease making a grade 1 piles which was easily curable in medical management to grade 4 large complex fistulas which require a very difficult complicated surgery so via this lecture i always want to try that this shyness needs to get out of it we need to really believe that perianal complications perianal surgery perianal diseases is a very common thing it is the commonest surgical problem and we really like people to insist that you have to remove the shyness out of it coming finally to the surgery aspect of it see what happens is we have a lot of patients who come with very very common miscommunications every patient has had <clears throat> some kind of suggestion from a neighbor suggestion from some nearby relative a lot of ayurvedic kind of complicated treatments which you know have no real basis no real indications and not only do they do not help they make our problems from grade 1 to grade 4 making it just more difficult and to be very honest on a personal level the most common doubt that i always get from a patient with perianal surgery is sir will i have incontinence will i lose everything and that really brings up to our today's lecture about lasers because what used to happen i mean i am doing all these kind of surgery since over 9 years to be very honest even i am doing lasers only since 2 years because it you know was not really common and earlier when we used to do surgery was little bit more aggressive where we used to use cautery where a lot of major areas used to be cut so there always was some kind of you know one in 100 kind of problems where the continence used to be dealt with why we deal about continence why we discuss about continence and why is it most important why we have moved towards lasers over the period of years is that is a very very major aspect the most important aspect while we are doing surgery because that is one complication that is 100% avoidable and something that in regular surgery there was always little chances there so it eventually brought us towards laser surgery now in laser surgery what does happen and why do we do it and why is it so beneficial that you know everyone wants it now so in lasers what happens is basically we are dealing with a high fiber laser in the high fiber laser the most simple advantage in plain language is it only burns the tissue that is needed it does not touch anything even 1 to 2 mm away from it so what used to happen in earlier discussing about each disease individually fissure piles and fistula in fissure we usually what we had to do is there's a tight anal spasm there's a tight fissure we need to relieve the sphincter we need to cut some fibers when we used to do traditional methods always there were some chances little bit more sphincter cut little bit more fibers cut causing some amount of incontinence for a few days and all that in lasers what happens it is absolute 10 minute surgery many surgeons including me prefer even to do it in local anesthesia where it becomes a pure day care surgery less than 4 hours later patient is back home where we insert the laser fiber and just a small cut literally the surgery being in 3 minutes 5 minutes surgery and the work is done so a uh, irritating fissure in ano patients with chronic fissures and all that who had so many apprehensions about it with the advent of lasers now it is reduced down to a 10 minute surgery where a laser lateral sphincterotomy done many a times in young patients we do it in local anesthesia 4 hours 5 hours patient is home 10 minute 15 minute surgery and that really has changed the outlook of perianal surgery coming to the most important advantage of laser surgery piles we usually had a lot of grade 1 and grade 2 piles where medical management was helpful but the real discussion comes in grade 3 and grade 4 piles around 3 4 years back we had another recent advance in perianal surgery that was staplers staplers was the new thing you know everyone was advantages about staplers and how the clear complete recovery and complete clearance of the major grade 4 piles was done but 
there were apprehensions about it there were a lot of patients with complications related there were a lot of patients with severe post op pain severe kind of donut which was incomplete and other complications that is where our lasers came in a very very simple surgery <clears throat> learning curve very simple all you had to do is reach up to the piles find the blood vessels which are mainly giving the blood supply to the piles because what basically is piles dilated veins dilated veins all around most commonly in the 3 7 and 11 o'clock position where we usually deal with it all we have to do is approach the piles give our nice laser shots to it which is usually around 3 to 4 seconds 1 1 cm 15 minutes 20 minutes with absolute precision difficult complicated piles over a period of 1 hour already shrinks to more than half so there is where the most biggest advantage of lasers that we have seen over a period of time in these complicated piles patients this again with staplers and regular surgery where we had a large amount of piles portion which was cut lot of bleeding which was happening post operatively patients were coming with lot of problems about tenesmus about pain about bleeding all those have eventually just kind of disappeared in my own personal two years experience patients have had such such big differences with the lasers because in perianal surgery especially in pile surgery they are going back home in one day they are going back to work in three days they are having very less pain they are really you know discussing the whole fact that there was so much negativity so much problems that they had heard about when it came to piles pile surgery those things have suddenly vanished because lasers have come then coming to the third surgery that we are discussing in the perianal aspect is fistula now in fistulas what happened is when there was low fistulas simple fistulas it is a smaller surgery 2 cm where we used to do it regular in cautery in that also laser has given us a new added advantage what used to happen in in fistula surgeries we always had to remove some amount of surrounding tissues some amount of infected tissues and that usually used to cause bigger wounds in a patient with fistula surgery patient had a delayed recovery patient has to come for regular follow ups have some dressings and all that and in this fast phase world everyone wants to get back fast because of lasers in pile surgery in fissure surgery we already have the advantage where patients are going back to work in 3 days 4 days in fistula that was the problem because we were still not achieving that we were still not having patients who were going back to work in 3 days 4 days so lasers came into it in lasers we had a very simple surgery which was introduced around a few years back called filac filac was basically laser assisted closures of the fistula what happens in that is a small laser fiber similar to those used in piles and fissures is introduced through the fistula small shots of burning usually at around 8 voltages given 2 to 3 seconds per centimeter and over a period of 15 minutes your complete fistula tract is healed is cured and all the disease is out in that the advantage was there was no wound there was no major chunks which were open patient started going back home earlier no sphincter damage so we had a complete advantage of earlier recovery earlier back to work in piles fissure and fistula all thanks to lasers so my main motive of this kind of lecture this kind of discussion today is to highlight all the negativity which was involved in perianal surgery the complications which used to make patients think twice about it is all near near zero in case of lasers and we also like to insist that please have a earlier opd visit so that you know many minor problems which can be avoided completely with medications with diet can be you know given a good early treatment to the patients and you can avoid surgery itself uh, if there are any basic doubts or anything i would really like to discuss it in detail so please let me know uh, hi sir there are few viewers that raise a few questions yes sure okay. uh, so in that the first viewer raised this uh, can we avoid surgery correct see now that is something that you know we really commonly get That uh, surgery नहीं करना है जो भी हो जाए हमको सर्जरी नहीं करना है सो वेन वी हैव पेशेंट्स हु एज ए सेड हैव माइनर इशूज जस्ट अ स्मॉल फिशर इन एनो ऑन प्रोक्टोस्कोपी ग्रेड वन ग्रेड टू पाइल्स डू दर दी आइडियल कैंडिडेट्स वे सर्जरी इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड 
there we have a two based management diet management conservative management with medications those if we give properly for a period of 7 days 15 days and we counsel adequately that you just have a good regular follow up and follow the medication strictly where it involves usually some kind of application of tubes and some syrups and all those over a period of 10 15 days there is gradual improvement in the pain the spasm is relieved the grade 1 grade 2 piles really settles down so at least 30 to 40% of patients are completely cured with medication and surgery is not required at all okay another viewer uh, raised this question that what are the diet precautions yes uh two three times during this lecture i have kept insisting on diet so what basically happens in the diet management of the patient see a dietitian will always give you a very long list of things that need to be followed and to be very honest that is the most ideal way of how a diet precaution should happen but we've seen in this fast paced world no one is really going to follow so i always usually make it very easy with few five to six pointers for my patients that becomes a very simple diet management for them to follow i usually start with the most important discussion that we always have is avoiding oily food avoiding avoiding spicy foods next it comes to avoiding outside food itself many a times we have a lot of apprehensions and negativity about sir kitna time tak karna hai so we usually say a maximum period of 15 days is more than enough when you are going for conservative management when you are going for operative management around 15 to 21 days the try of avoiding the oily food spicy food and outside food second and very important is fibers green vegetables fruits which really help in wound healing which to some extent control the constipation and allow the wound healing to happen very quickly besides that the most important water fluids we always have a very simple notion ke sir kitna pani peena hai kya karna hai humko samajh nahi aa raha i have a very simple advice to them take a 1 liter bottle stick your name on it ensure that you fill the bottle and you finish the bottle thrice in a day simple 3 liters so patient has a very simple easy method where he can control the amount of water intake that he has these kind of small things really make you know not much sense for the patient but once they follow it they have a regular 3 liter diet they have that good amount of fibers fruits green vegetables on a daily diet salads in a daily diet they really see the difference in 7 15 days and we had very good feedback where these simple dietary precautions make it very easy for the patient Okay. Another viewer raised this question that why is laser surgery better? Correct. See, that brings to one of the most important discussion of why we having this lecture in the first place. So, what basically is the advantage of lasers is the five pointer, simple technique. Very very simple technique is in laser surgery where we just go straight forward for the area that needs to be uh, cleared out and it's done. Second, early recovery. patients are having much smaller wounds it is a direct thing with no amount of damage to the surrounding tissues third is less painful very very important because everyone wants to get over with the pain fast fourth is early back to work and last and most important is very early discharge because many a times we've seen that patients do not have the advantage of waiting for 2 2 days 3 3 days many of the surgeons including me have include started doing local anesthesia for this kind of where small fissures small fistulas you can actually have just local anesthesia we give something like a perianal block and the surgery is already completed in less than half an hour four hours patient is back home two days back patient is back to office with just minimal medications and good diet precautions for seven days so that is the most advantage of laser along with it a very very important apprehension negativity that patient had was sphincter is involved so in lasers sphincter is never never damaged because laser fibers are very particular very specific and they do not involve cutting of the other areas so the big complication notion which was there is completely relieved out in laser and that is the most important reason why lasers have come really into force now okay and uh, one more question we come up with uh, how to avoid misconceptions Uh, and uh, adverse effects correct correct yes so what happens is many of the patients i mean i have barely had a patient who not had a consult outside but many of those consults are not to a surgeon they are not to a proctologist 
they are with someone at office some relative many a time to some ayurvedic kind of preparations or you know those kind of i mean you wouldn't say it but people who really give those guidance with no scientific belief of it so in those you know our first consult many a times for the first half an hour goes to explaining that you know we respect the thoughts of the others but those are not scientifically proven and they you know strangely involve very odd things like use of some oil use of some powder use of candles for dilatation and all you know those kind of ayurvedic things you know when we listen to it when we hear the misconceptions we really need to talk to the patient and counsel the patient that you if you go with that you really are going to land up with severe disease more complicated disease which is only going to get more difficult for us and for his quick recovery second as i earlier insisted it was the biggest misconception of sir hum log ka fir wo motion reh nahi jayega continence nahi rahega bahut log bolte hai ki ye ek problem aayega so that one misconception in lasers we usually explain why are small videos that surrounding tissues are never touched the sphincter is always saved and there's no problem last misconception that we always have is sir surgery to hum kara lenge but ye wapas ho jayega we'll be coming back abhi hum kyu kara hai so that is a misconception that again is as common as the whole sphincter involvement so in that we usually try to tell the patients is if there is a good clearance which is done during surgery and if the patient helps us guides us in having a good dietary control over a period of 21 days and small lifestyle modifications that he does in a regular basis 5 years 10 years 20 years no perianal disease is going to have a recurrence and that is very important because very very commonly this misconception is there that ye sab surgery karane se we are only going to come back in 5 years so we really need to counsel about little bit of regular follow up of 3 months 6 months one simple follow up where we mainly have to reinsist on the medical management dietary precaution that the patient has to take so that he doesn't have to come back with this problem ever again okay and uh, another question we uh, received yes. that can anal fissure leads to colon cancer yeah now what happens is uh, there's a lot of other aspects which are involved in colon cancer where we usually see the age of the patient the other genetic factors associated a most important are tobacco use alcohol use and all that now in perianal surgery or in perianal problems like fissure like piles we always have some kind of other adverse things that we need to keep in mind like irritable bowel syndrome ulcerative colitis colon cancer so what we really need to see is we need to filter out with patients do we really have to think about this many a times we have patients with fissure in ano we've done just simple pr he is not allowing for proctoscopy because of the pain suddenly when we take him for surgery we are doing a small lateral sphincterotomy it is relieved and when we see inside we see a small mass we see a big ulcer so these are definitely very very important aspects to be dealt with especially in patients where we are having a chronic smoking history chronic alcohol history some genetic history of colon cancer old age uh there is irregular bleeding pr which is happening so those are the factors that we usually keep in our mind that these things can happen we also have to counsel the patient because what happens is we are talking about fissure you are planning a laser sphincterotomy and suddenly we come out of the surgery and say ke shayad inko wahan pe ek chhota ghat hai wahan pe problem hai so when we have a old age patient when we have a patient with lots of regular smoking alcohol history genetic history we always counsel the patient that along with this we will do a detailed examination quadrant wise check for any masses check for any ulcers and if anything like that does come up we take small biopsies and we have a further management to it okay uh, i believe this session is very interesting we are getting questions uh, back to back sir no problem so there is one more question we received that how is the post treatment prognosis correct see post treatment prognosis as i said we really need to counsel the patient because patients with grade 4 piles where they have a lot of pain in post op patients i always talk about two symptoms to the patient pain and bleeding pain and bleeding what happens is whole post operative management is control of these two symptoms 
so nowadays with the advent of newer jellies and newer other applications and because of the lasers very small amounts of areas that are involved the post operative pain is usually less bleeding nowadays <coughs> more than 1 to 2 days the bleeding also doesn't happen so post operative management when we have those good diet controls and application of ointments that we usually allow for 2 to 3 times a day just within 2 or 3 days the post op management is pretty much complete for the patient no other medication needed and back to work with just simple diet control uh one more question yes. uh, we received that are there chances of redo surgeries yes see now in redo surgery when i was trying to talk about it three aspects of it there is piles fissure and fistula most commonly redo surgery if we have seen in our private practice in fistula surgery now what happens in fistula surgery is many a times we've got a patient who's already operated outside for fistula surgery so it becomes a very difficult opd consultation and explaining the patient about what had happened previously there was some amount of fistula which may have been left behind or some kind of incomplete clearance because of which a redo surgery is happening now in such kind of cases we really need to explain to the patient that if we use lasers where a very detailed assessment and very particular guided complete clearance complete closure can happen redo surgery chances with use of lasers really comes down to where it was common in earlier regular surgery for 15 to 20% it has come down to less than 2% so that's why we also insist to patients with complicated fistulas with large grade 4 piles that please go with laser surgeries because the chances of redo the chances of recurrence is less than 2% as compared to 20% to 18 to 20% in the regular surgeries which was there 3 years back which has now come down to less than 2% because of the advent of lasers okay uh one well, last question sir we yes. uh, take this and uh, that patient shared his experience actually okay so just wanted to read out this yes. that hello doctor i am suffering from anal fistula i had a laser surgery 5 uh, months ago but external wound is not healing correct now i am taking homeopathic medicine from past 3 months it looks like uh, it looked like uh, it is healing but a small abscess formed after 3 to 4 days and again the abscess breaks and create a wound and discharges blood okay. what to do it's happened three times how to prevent abscess formation and it is healed from outside only i am worried that externally it is healed then it will create problem in future correct see in this kind of patients what we need to know is first of all if you would have a more details like does he have sugar or does he have another any other issues which is one of the most important factors why wound healing is delayed itself second thing is if he is had laser surgery if there has been a complete clearance of it what happens is what we usually counsel the patients is your fistula is very very close to the anal verge we have the anal opening this is something that i explain to all my patients in post operative one of the most infected a- specimen of our body is the feces that we have through the anal opening the most infected parts are discharging you, whenever patients have fissure surgery fistula surgery the wounds are 2 cm 3 cm next to the anal opening there is a lot of toxic material going through it as early as 6 hours after surgery so some amount of toxic materials if left behind they do cause some infection on and off but with if there is adequate clearance which has happened inside and the fistula has been cleared this is just a small boil or a skin infection which over a period of time with adequate medical management and just kind of local clearance complete clearance will happen and we always have to counsel such patients that cleanliness of that area keeping that area dry especially after motions is something that looks very small looks very trivial but it needs to be followed because just small tiny microscopic infection via the feces can really affect your surrounding areas causing these kind of small boils causing these kind of abscesses which are unnecessarily troubling you so please just ensure keeping that area dry keeping that area clean good antibiotic control and within no time complete clearance and complete healing of that local abscess will 100% happen thank you so much sir that thank was you. a great session 
Thank and you. You have addressed.